All right, today's lecture, talking about a coupon bond. All right, now what a coupon bond is, is it basically allows us to look at something in a different way. Okay? It allows us to structure a bond payment in a slightly different way in that if we were looking at taking out a mortgage, right? let's say we're looking at this mortgage that's worth $100,000, it's going to be coming in 30 years, a 30-year mortgage at 5%. Okay? Now, if we just did this, we had a lump sum, right? We just made a one big payment at the end. Okay, if we put all this in, right, you know, we do the future value is equal to our present value here, right? Multiplied by our 5% interest rate at 30 years. We know that that would be, end up being worth to us, or at the end, we'd have a lump sum payment of $432,194. $432, okay? Now, our question here is, does this seem like something that we would want to be making a payment out in 30 years? Am I going to be, have the discipline to be making all these payments over time? Right? Because this ends up being pretty risky. Okay? This would be really risky for the bank because they look at this and they go, ooh, I don't know if that discipline, because I know me personally, I don't know if I would be able to make sure I make my mortgage payment every month. Right? I might look at some other things and say, oh, you know, I got 30 years to make that up. Okay? But we wouldn't want to be in that situation. So same thing goes with corporations that are raising funds through the bond market, is that we then allow for these coupon bonds. Okay? And with these coupon bonds, we have two components. One of the component, components is we have a payment. Okay? This is our coupon. Okay? We have a payment that can come annually, it can come semi-annually. They normally don't come more often than that, but they can be structured down into being a monthly. Um, and then we also have, at the end, we have a lump sum. Okay? You might look at some of these in some way and think of some balloon payments or something else along those lines. Um, but when we do this is that basically we have a payment, right? Let's say our payment is $100 a month, okay? And then at the end, we have a balloon payment of $1,000, okay? Now, if we were doing this and just to, to think about it with the calculator sets is that this is going to be our future value, okay? And then this amount here is going to be the payment, okay? So that payment part, this part right here, we can think of this as being similar to an annuity, okay? And our lump sum is just a lump sum present value type payment, okay? Now, when we do this is that we have a formula that we're going to be using for our bond value, okay? So with our value, we're going to use this as V sub D as our bond value. And our equation that we are going to be using, it's, you're definitely going to want to write this all down. is that we break this out, and our left half here is that this is going to be our, our payments. Okay? This left half here is going to be our payments. The right side over here, this is going to be our lump sum. Okay? And what we see is that the, this part over here what does that look like to you? That looks like our same sort of thing that we're doing with our general uh, things that we look at, is that we have a future value divided by our discount rate. Okay? And so that's, that's really what, what we're looking at there. Over on this half is that we are looking at the value of our annuity. right? And this is the same way that we would, we would compute the value of that annuity. Okay? So um, we have those two components there, and then um, we then are going to just compute the value what a, of what a bond would be. Now, what we have is we have this bond here where we have a 10% interest payment over 15 years at $1,000. So what this means is that we're making 10% yearly interest payments. Okay? And we're making a payment once a year for 15 years. 
So we're basically we're borrowing a thousand dollars. Okay, this has a face value of a thousand. So what we do is we take our thousand dollars, and then we're going to multiply that by our ten percent. Okay, which tells us that we're going to have yearly payments of a hundred dollars. Okay, so we have yearly payments of a hundred dollars. Okay, and then the next thing that we do is that we look at those yearly payments of a hundred dollars, and then we also have uh, the uh, our lump sum at the end. Okay, so we want to know what is the value of $100 payments for the next 15 years. We're then going to put this in that equation that we, we just showed last time, and we're going to have basically here, we're going to have that $100 payment, that's that interest payment over there, and then this is going to be 1 minus 1 over 1.1 raised to the 15th power. Right, we have a, a little bit of discount rate right here, or just like our, our traditional time value of money formula, and that's going to be divided by R. Okay, and then we're going to add on to that. We're going to have our payment here, which is our maturity value, which is that thousand dollars divided by the 1.1 to the 15th power. Okay, now we we do all the math on this, and the stuff on the left side, right, is showing us that it's going to have a value of. $760.61. Okay, and on the right hand side, we're going to have $239.39. Okay, so we're showing that our value on the left over here is our, the value of just those payments. That is just the value of the annuity. We compute the annuity, that's what we're going to end up getting. Okay, over here, what we have is that we have the value of just that, that lump sum, that payment at the end. That payment at the end has a value of 239, just that component. Okay? Now, when we add this all up, right, is that we know that these are going to end up being equal to $1,000. They end up being equal to the face value, the face value of that payment. Okay? All right. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, and, because when we think about this, is that it's saying, hey, here, take the, the, the $1,000. And this is, one way you could think of this, is an interest-only loan. Okay? We have an interest-only loan. Basically what it is, is I borrow $1,000, and I'm going to pay you the interest every single year. I'm going to pay off the interest. There's been $100 that has accrued over this year, and I'm going to pay you $100. I'm going to pay you $100 next year, because that's what's going to accrue in interest. And at the end of the time period, I'm going to pay you, pay the rest of it off. Uh, now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this with the financial calculator. It's still a relatively straightforward thing that we're going to be doing, okay? Um, but we have here just a, we have a num in here is going to be our 15. We're going to have a payment, right, of, uh, of $100, right? We computed that. We have a uh, present value that we are, don't know yet. And then we have a, uh, a, a future value is going to be 1,000, okay? And I over Y is going to be 10. All right, so we're doing this, and we have to now just plug these things in, right? So we're going to have 15 is N, okay? We have a payment of 100, okay? We have, we don't, we... We have $1,000 is going to be our future value, and then we have I over Y is going to be 10. Okay, so we're now going to compute our present value, and that's going to show us $1,000. Right, just, just like we just did with all the other math. To $1,000, whether we do it longhand or we do it using the calculator. The equation equals the other way.